So far in my journey through the multiverse, all of my trips have been in carefully curated and built mod packs. Things that I make to be cohesive and balanced and have a plan. And I put a lot of work into those. But what if I didn't? What if instead of building a mod pack with any sense or reason, we did it completely randomly at the mercy of a random number generator and a roll of a dice? So instead of surviving in something normal like an ocean world or a desert world or a magical world, let's just load up Minecraft and load a new mod each day and see what happens. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. It's free, it helps me out so much, and you get to know first about new challenges coming my way. But with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Load up the world day one. And I rolled and got unhealthy dying. This doesn't feel like it's gonna matter much in a hardcore video. I spawned immediately in front of a village, which is speedrun strats right here. I'm loving it. I looted everything that wasn't nailed down, made the one tool that everybody uses for about 20 blocks worth, and then lets it break. Got some stone tools, killed a cow, got some food, continued looting the village, killed their iron golem, and used its iron to make a bucket to MLG my way down into a ravine to grab even more resources. But as it started getting dark, I had all of four torches to my name. So I went back up to the surface, slept in a bed, and rolled again, getting a Magicka card game as my second mod. As I started up the day, I set the iron to smelt and went for a quick boat ride just to check my surroundings, finding some dark oak and some pumpkins, so I'd have a food source and different types of woods, which is gonna be nice, making a set of iron armor and starting to build a little bit of a tiny house. Since the mods are gonna be so different, I'm gonna go for as small as a house as I can just to make things interesting, do something different. With a ravine, I was able to get really deep very quickly, so I was, you know, at the right level just to set myself on fire with lava, killing mobs and running around for resources as the day rolled over to day number three. And this time I got, as it rolled over to day number three and I got better carrots. Oh boy. I also installed JEI because this is gonna get really complicated. So I went back up to the surface and started planting all the crops that I have, which is pumpkins and wheat and potatoes. So no carrots. I sailed across the ocean in search of the elusive orange root vegetable and found an ocean monument. Ain't no way I'm touching that on day three. I found a spruce forest, so I got yet another type of wood, but I ran out of food, so I just sailed home and turned back. On day four, I can make a gun out of pumpkins, so this is going to be fun. I fought off the mobs that were camping out in front of my house. Door campers can't escape them. Building out my little two by one starter race to just get it to look a little bit more homely. The pumpkins growing out back are now doubly important, which is wonderful, as I was fighting skeletons for bone meal so I could get pumpkins so I could craft the pumpkin pistol before heading to bed. Want to know how I'm able to run all of these mods? It's because I have a really powerful PC. And if you want to get one that could also run this mod pack and make your own or get started in content creation, why not check out my partner Apex Gaming PCs? I've been working with them for half of the year. It's been amazing and I'm really excited for what we're going to do in 2022. And until January 31st, my code is doubled, meaning you get 10% off your order if you use code Lagundo at checkout. Hit the link down in the description to check out the Guardian, the Myth, or the Legend. Let me know if you grab one, and let's get back to the chaos. Day five, I can make myself a crown? Yes, I love it. Who needs to be an MCC? I'm already royalty. I'm just kidding, Scott, please invite me. Started with a simple little A-frame pitch route to get a little bit of the shape figured out with different stones, raiding out the bookshelves and hay bales, from all around the village and consolidating all of that to my home. In the evening, I was fighting creepers and skeletons just to get a few of the early game resources that I need, finding two villagers stuck on a ledge in the ravine. I tried to help them up, but it didn't really work. I was able to use the gunpowder that I got to craft a set of pumpkin bullets and... <laughs> This is ridiculous, and it's only day five. Day six, I want this in the main game. Woodcutters, yes! This is gonna make a wooden house way more efficient to build. I exterminated most of the local wildlife for food, finding another ravine and jumping down into it. It intersected with the mine shaft because this is a Lagundo video in hardcore. Grabbing lapis and shortly thereafter, finding some diamonds a little bit further down in the world. Not bad pace. I made myself a diamond pick, grabbed the food, and then ran straight home before the night ended. 
On day seven, I got the Stronger Snowballs mod, which will come in handy later. I did some detail work around the house, framing all of the windows with posters, or setting up what would look like shades around all of them, around some glass panes that I just quickly smelted up. There's some snow on a nearby mountain, so I sailed over towards that and found a completable portal right here, just a few blocks of obsidian down. I grabbed all of the snow, using my pistol to great effect and captured a swamp zombie villager. Man, I wish I could move them to the hardcore world right now. I figured I'd go through, but I waited until day eight when I got a grappling hook mod. Anybody here been playing Halo Infinite? You knew I turned around immediately to get myself a grappling hook. I went down in the mines to grab enough iron to make a hopper, thinking that I could set myself up with a very cheap, very early snowball farm with a snow golem. It didn't exactly work, so I did more free range approach with a few stacks of snowballs heading into the nether on day eight in one of these challenges. Day nine, I got some fancy windows that I'm not gonna use for a while because I'm in the nether. I went looking in several directions and found basically dead ends. So I just started digging through a wall, hoping I'd eventually get to something. I emerged in a crimson forest and this grappling hook is a little difficult to use. Getting off hoglands and making my way towards a bastion. I'm in a bastion in day nine in a hardcore world video. This does not make sense. I stole all of their gold because we love stealing and boxed myself and one of the piglins up trading everything I could, hoping to get ender pearls and fire resistance potions so I'd be able to make my way home more safely and fast track my way to the stronghold. I had nothing and I had no blocks to get out of there safely. So I used all of the obsidian that I had been traded, making a portal back to the overworld and preferring to traverse over that throughout the night instead of risking traveling in the nether. That went into day 10 where I can make a block of charcoal. Look, not all of these mods are gonna be winners. I spent over half the day just walking home. It takes quite a while to travel when on foot. I forget that. Once I was home, I smelted up enough logs to get enough charcoal to make a block of charcoal. And yeah, it's a block of charcoal. I did a little bit of work on the roof, so it was a productive evening going into day 11 where we got launchers? Ooh, this could be fun. I went down in the mines searching for the materials I would need, iron, gold, and redstone specifically, finding a lot of zombies and a couple diamonds. I didn't find everything I needed for the launchers, so instead I took all of the resources that I got and used them to finish up the roof, having it mostly finished by the end of the night. On day 12, I got bouncier beds and yeah, they're really bouncy. I went back down again, getting the little bit of redstone that I needed to craft up an iron launcher. And it throws you some decent blocks in the sky. Not as much as the bed though. Grabbing a little bit of glass, just so I'd be able to use that in future recipes. And harvesting a little bit of gunpowder to upgrade that launcher to the gold tier. On day 13, I can make diagonal fences, which is amazing, but also ridiculously cursed. I upgraded the launcher to gold and it's almost high enough to get me out of the ravine. But if you miss, you fall and hit at only one heart, so don't miss. I jumped in a boat and went sailing out in search for carrots again, finding a mending golden chest plate at a ruined portal, which is kind of nice. Grabbing everything I found at a sunken ship before, before landing at the other side of this huge ocean, raiding a village for a couple diamonds and sleeping in one of their beds. Going into day 14 and... <sighs> It out of the Squid Game dolls. Come on, let's be honest. I knew that this was gonna happen at some point, but I didn't think it would be this early in the video. I stole all of the carrots that I possibly could, spent the day sailing across the ocean back towards my house where I used those diamonds and obsidian that I had found to make an enchanting table to protect on my gear. I grew a bunch of carrots with bone meal just so I could get those all set up and then made a sharp carrot and attempted to stab some zombies with it. <laughs> I mean, it works. On day 15, I can make obsidian tools. So I went down into the ravine and turned all of the lava that I could find into obsidian to just get obsidian for the tools. The first Squid Game doll attacked me and whew, that thing is actually kind of scary, but I don't know how hard it hits. It says that they're really lethal. They can also open doors, which is a really good thing to know. So I spent the rest of the night just stabbing everything as it made its way through, slept, and went into day 16, where I can now crouch to make crops grow. I got attacked by one of those little child dolls and that was actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> And I know about this mod because I'm doing a Sky Factory Let's Play over on Facebook, link in the description, and it's busted. I got a wall running enchant on my boots, so I do this weird 
Titanfall kind of thing. Whenever I touch a wall, I'll figure it out as I go. Adding a second launcher, which puts me way up out of the ravine, but I'm gonna need a landing pad if I'm not gonna break my ankles every time. So I made one out of some waterlogged slabs, and I did that about another dozen times that I didn't show you. <laughs> to test the wall running though, I started setting up these little walls that I could jump from one to the next to the next. Kind of like the Colosseum in Titanfall 2. It was a lot of fun, and that was honestly the rest of the day for me. Continuing on being able to make obsidian things, now I can make an obsidian boat. So I went back down and forgot where I had left that lava, eventually finding a separate place that had lava in it, getting enough pieces for an obsidian boat. I put it down in the water, and yep, that's exactly what I expected. Heading over to the nether, where it's way more useful. I spent so much time sailing around here, and this is awesome. Strider riding is awesome, but this is awesome. Until it sinks. Oh no, great. I'm stranded in the nether. I'm just gonna let the next mod speak for itself. Oh god, it's so cursed. Single player, hardcore minimo version. Oh god, popoy sector world. Oh, I hate it. Oh, that's right, and we're stuck in the nether. Ah! Oh no, it's everywhere. Oh, it makes everything. Oh no, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. But I was able to stem the lava so I could get my obsidian boat back, sailing into another bastion and finding a fortress a little bit further down in the lava lake. Once inside, I was pretty quickly able to find the blaze spawner and used a lot of those snowballs to do damage from range, which was kind of cool. I'm glad I kept them in my inventory for here. But there was no inside to the fortress. And this is like the fourth time that this has happened to me, that the first nether fortress I find has no nether wart inside of it. I sailed back in the obsidian boat, sailed back in the boat in the overworld, and went back to bed to sleep. D19 added moo blooms back to the game, so I went over to the birch forest that's somewhere close to my house to see if one would spawn. I gave it a good old honest try, running around and trying to find everything, and then spent the rest of the day playing with the raw. <laughs> and then spent the rest of the day playing with the wall running enchantment, which is so much fun, in all honesty. I love games that let you do wall running. These Squid Game dolls, though, they are kind of a bit of a nuisance right now. I did spend a little bit of the night running around and capturing a cat in a boat so I could tame them a little bit later. But there were way too many mobs, so I slept in one of the houses going into day 20 where I can now do vertical slabs. I don't even need to miss a cat video for it. So since I got a decorative block, I spent most of the day just doing decorative work around the base, vertical slabs around the entire foundation, some trapdoors as very thin shelves on the interior, and just making the place feel a little bit more like home. I then went over to the nether using that obsidian boat to sail back to work to the second bastion that I had found, and we're gonna do a little bit more raiding in this space. Considering I couldn't find another wart in the fortress, we're gonna try to find it in the bastion, but it wasn't the right type, so instead I just traded in a lot of the gold that I had on hand to try to get some pearls and some potions. And doing that with the Squid Game dolls just constantly peeking in my ear drives me nuts. Day 21, my storage got a huge upgrade with sophisticated backpacks, which I instantly made and started heading away for a stronghold with a lot more able to be carried without having to wait for shulker boxes. I broke three eyes along the way, which was ridiculously unfortunate. I found the stronghold intersecting with an abandoned mineshaft because... <sighs> I found some books in the library, which will be great for level 30 enchants, and a compass, which will be great on letting me find my way home. And of course, I'm exactly three eyes short. That always seems to happen to me. On day 22, I got the Ben 10 mod, so yep. This is going about as well as I planned. I crafted the instruction book and almost all of this is gonna require really weird ores that I'm gonna have to generate in new chunks that is rarer than diamond. I'm gonna let you in on a secret here. I don't really get into this mod too much. It's way too high tier. I marked the stronghold position and sailed back, which took literally all day. On day 23, I can milk all mobs, so I spent some time milking all the different mobs. I also tamed my cat, which is nice. Now I have a friend in this world. Doing some general work around the base, harvesting and cleaning up all of the crops, waiting until it got night, catching some endermen in boats, and using that obsidian axe for those sweet, sweet crit damage, but never getting any pearls. Just really bad luck on the drops. I tamed a black cat that I found wandering throughout the woods and showed it the launcher. 
You honestly all have no idea how many times I use that launcher just for fun. Day 24 and there were so many mobs counting outside my house that the pumpkin pistol is coming in really handy. I dug all the way down to the bedrock level because I wanted to see a bread bedrock block, but I'm thinking now I realize I probably needed to go to new chunks again to get those blocks. So I expanded a little bit of a farm in the center of the village instead, trying to focus on building up infrastructure around here and killed another enderman in a boat and didn't get a pearl. As I slept and went into day 25, I got my favorite mod from the MCX SMP, Easy Villagers. I can put them in little protective boxes and carry villagers around. No more having to worry about complex redstone machines. Being able to crouch to grow crops is extremely overpowered, and I am a god of gardening. I grew up an entire huge field of everything, building a villager breeder, putting two villagers and a bunch of resources in, and getting a villager baby out immediately. I put them in the incubator, and then made a very quick little system with a hopper to just auto grow them all up into parents. I demoed one of the houses to start up a little bit of a trading hall, sleeping, and the next day getting an evil wandering trader mod. Eep, Mongo has joined the game. I continued setting up all of the different trading stations in this new house, first going for a cleric, thinking that they would trade me for ender pearls, then realizing that I don't have my super reliable way to get a ton of emeralds really easily, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. So I went for a Fletcher so I could get sticks to emeralds for that trade. I fought off a few Endermen late in the night and didn't get pearls again, and I'm starting to think that there's something wrong with this axe. The next day I got teleporters, which would be huge. I could just put one over the portal and one over here. That'd be great. I need obsidian and redstone to make them work. And oh look, obsidian tools don't work on redstone. I'm starting to think that this is a bit of a bait. I have no redstone to my name. So I went down into the basement area of the base and found a ton of iron, but only one little patch of redstone. And investing that in the teleporters right now, maybe not a good play. The next day, I got a better flint mod, so I plopped down a bunch of gravel trying to get flint, and it took a little while. <laughs> Eventually, I was able to craft the flint into a flint block, and corporate wanted me to see the difference between these two blocks. They're the same block. I grabbed a few of the villagers who were grown up out of the breeder and threw them into the boxes for some early trades to try to see if I can set up on a positive emerald loop. I was leveling up the cleric and killing endermen with the axe and still not getting any pearls. I'm thinking, maybe there's something wrong with this tool too. I made an obsidian sword, and as soon as I started killing things with that instead, yeah, they started dropping loot again. Oh, okay, that was what it was. So I enchanted it and went to bed. I forgot I got this mod actually, but you can wax wood now. Okay, I need a beehive, but I need silk touch for that. So I moved the enchanting setup outside and set it up for level 30 enchants, cut down trees for sticks for emeralds, and then went over to the other mine shaft trying to get some redstone and some other supplies that I need for more trading stations and more launchers. Found a lot of gold and some decent redstone. Now that I have a diamond pick and know when to use it, it's definitely making sense. And was able to find and clear out the cave spider spawner, primarily using water just to keep those uh, poisony buggers away from me. While I was down there on day 30, I got always a wither skull and this is overpowered and broken, but I'm not going to the nether and I'm not even thinking about fighting the wither just yet. So I ran back home and started doing a little bit more trading. I saw a beehive really late at night, so quickly made a campfire and just planted one under there, figuring it would passively generate honey that I could go get to then start worrying about waxing my house. I killed an enderman to get the last pearl, and I'm starting to think that I'm ready for a dragon fight soon. On day 31, I got a mod that if you held a bell in your offhand while fishing, the bell would ring when there was a fish on your hook, which allowed me to watch some YouTube videos for a little bit while I was AFKing for half of this day. I prepped all of my gear, food, and supplies, and spent the entire rest of the day heading back over to the stronghold, dug my way back in, and built up another portal, and then just didn't ignite it. Don't know what I was thinking there lit the end portal, and was ready to jump in. Right before I entered the end, I unlocked wood armor, which is super helpful, let me tell you. And the first thing that I was unprepared for is that the end is filled with Squid Game dolls. Lots and lots of Squid Game dolls. Squid Game dolls that hit you for five hearts if they happen to get a hold of you, and there were more of them than there were Endermen on this island, so I died. A lot. Look, I spent maybe four hours trying to do this dragon fight with the dolls enabled, so I shut them off 
and then we went through again on day 33, where it was a lot more of a traditional dragon fight. Bowing down all of the crystals, knowing all of the angles, and I'm feeling at this point like this is an absolute breeze, just bowing down the dragon and killing it when it's on its perch on day 34, stabbing her in the throat, collecting all of the experience, the egg, and remembering to turn the mod back on before we go forward. And you know what? This whole installing a mod every day is starting to get a little time consuming, so let's do it in batches. I installed 10 mods to cover the next 10 days. Those include trash cans, storage doors, apple skins, chisel, bamboo everything, seals, cookable berries, bridges, gnomed, and loot beams. So Minecraft is basically destiny now. Those were immediately apparent, and I really like them actually. I'm probably gonna install this in every mod pack I ever make from going forward. This stuff is really cool. I crafted up a garbage can, which destroys any item put inside of it, which is extremely helpful and then use the chisel to decorate all the different types of planks around my house to give it a lot more character. Late into the evening, I remembered I had sweetberry bushes right in front of my house, so I picked and cooked a few of those, and it has 30, 30 saturation. That's ridiculous. Next day, I used the end stone to decorate the enchantment setup just because I think it looks nice. Harvesting a bunch of dark wood to start making a bridge over from one of those little outcroppings to another. I made a set of storage drawers to hold the bulk materials for a few of the different blocks that I had multiple stacks of right now. And now that I had a lot more coal on hand from all of my mining trips, spent some time torching around the house to secure a greater perimeter of safety. And whew, is that gonna become very important very soon. On day 37, knowing the coordinates of the stronghold, I dug to where that would be in the Crimson Forest over in the nether, and then lit a portal. I got jump scared multiple times by a few different piglin attacks. Apparently my gold crown doesn't count as gold armor. Dug my way up to the surface, found my way over to the little drop shaft down into the end portal room, and jumped over into the end on day 38, purling over to the outer islands, now with the squid game dolls enabled, to try to find a end city. There's one relatively close to my first gateway, with a ship attached, so I just pillared directly up to the ship, nabbing some high tier loot and my first wings, flying over to the top of one of the nearby end cities to loot the chests over on that side, which continued into day 39. Now I don't have rockets, so I'm primarily relying on gravity to get me from place to place, but I was able to get my first shulker box, which expanded my utility even more. And since I didn't have to worry about pearls, just flew through the gateway to return home just in time to sleep and kick it off to day 40, where I was doing a little bit of organizing my inventory and get my armor fully and properly enchanted with level 30. Crouching is overpowered. It even grows sugarcane. You can't even bone meal sugarcane, but me going eh, 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 makes sugarcane grow. I love it. With that on hand, I used a bunch of rockets to fly around, finding a nearby spruce village and sleeping there. On day 41, I continued flying to explore the local area and found a jungle temple and a completable nether portal right close by. Just on the other end of that, there was a wandering trader with no llamas, which was strange. Once I talked to them though, they attacked. Okay, so that's what it's like when Mongo is evil and deceit. I was a bingo fuel though, so I really only had enough rockets to barely get me home before calling it a night. Day 42, being able to crouch harvest bamboo is just so exciting, I love it. And turning all of that into sticks is working really well to get me emeralds. I can also craft up iron farms, but I need buckets of lava for that. I flew over to a nearby lava pool and then did my best Tanisha impression to give myself a crafting table to make several buckets of lava turn into iron farms, each of which gets a villager and gives me a lot of iron. <laughs> On day 43, I did a little bit of fishing first thing in the morning to get some fish to be able to breed the cats, to be able to make a few more of them, so I can creeper-proof certain areas of my base, and also to prepare myself for a creeper farm that I think I can build to make sure I'll be able to fly everywhere. I turned a lot of the bamboo into the new blocks that I had access to, with fences and blocks being used for decoration throughout the village, and the iron farms are finally producing. On day 44, since I can now fly, I went back over to the nether and flew over to the fortress, and since skeletons will always drop wither skulls, I only had to kill three to prepare myself for a potential wither fight a little bit later. Maybe this is what it's like being dreamed. 
I flew home and placed them in a decorative position on my wall for now. I have them, but I don't think I'm quite ready for that battle just yet. On day 45, I did a little bit of wood harvesting and collected all of the resources out of all of the iron farms, which was just enough to allow me to make a bunch of hoppers that I could pretty much automate this solution now. Routing all of their outputs to a singular double chest, it's loud and it's kind of annoying, but it totally works. But I spent the rest of the day crouching to grow the fields to power the villager breeder and crouching on the bamboo to get more sticks for trades as well as more bamboo fences to be able to decorate the village. And this iron farm is kind of loud, but it totally works. And I'm starting to feel like I have everything under control which is time for the next round of mods. Next round of mods, I installed Rats, the Mimic mod, Piggy Banks from MC Dungeons, Cursed Earth, I can make dice now, sword displays, infinity and mending, colored lanterns, craftable portal recipes, and oh. The second I joined, there's little sussy boys everywhere. These things spawn in droves. I also do the kill sound when you kill them, which is so much fun. I enchanted the bow, trying to see if I could get infinity or mending before I had to worry about combining the two, and crafted up a blue D6. It was not exactly what I expected, but it's still pretty cool. When it got to the night though, I realized how dangerous and broken this Among Us mod actually was. As one of the imposters hit me for eight hearts of damage, damage bolt they absolutely fly i was able to escape just barely going back to the home and sleeping into day 47 where i was baiting the among us imposters into the water to be able to stab them from underneath when they couldn't kill me these things hit like a truck it is awful so i quickly re-enchanted my armor to get higher tiers and got two new villagers to be able to get books i immediately want protection for and mending before the next night's even gonna happen and that's because i am spamming on that bed the second the sun goes down so no red imposters spawn day 48 Easy Villagers makes cycling trades a breeze. All you really have to do is click a button and it'll get you a new set of trades like that. So getting mending and protection is really just a matter of patience and not accidentally clicking it when you get the trade that you wanted. That totally didn't happen, don't worry about that. But as I was in the process of trying to get the books that I wanted, a plague doctor with a couple of rats on leads started to walk through the base and yeah, that, that, that that feels very concerning as i was once again spamming on the bed before it could get dark into day 49 where i set up a few more villagers i have both of the books that i want but i thought i could set up a few toolsmith villagers to get iron trades in it's still expensive but it is a very reliable source of emeralds now that i have a very reliable source of iron coming from those iron farms i disenchanted and upgraded my pants got another protection four book made a second set of diamond boots but didn't see any good in chance on those while running was starting to become a little more of a liability than actually working and this plague doctor is legitimately freaking me out just floating around here on day 50 i remembered that on deceit i'm the traitor so i spent a good chunk of the day just running around and killing these among us people and yeah in my notes it just says was a traitor on here too decided to kill them on day 51 i think i have a strategy for whenever the imposters try to kill me throw down a bucket of water they can't swim against the current and I can just shoot them down with my new bow it's a one hit kill but only if I'm at full draw and they move way too fast so if they target me first I'm in trouble I'm starting to keep track of how many of each color I've killed in the chest right next to the wood because my organization is amazing but every time one of them targets me it's just this panic run to try to get two blocks up or a water barrel down to be able to shoot them before they can stab me I have no notes for 52 to 56. Really? I have no notes? Starting on day 52, I go on a little bit of an expedition into the nether, using my very few rockets sparingly to cover over individual lava lakes and walking on land to make the distance to be able to find more landmarks. I really need potions if I'm going to take on the wither or really at this point progress any further in this world and since a fortress failed a bastion might just work i found the right type of bastion digging in through the back wall making sure that i was never accessible by piglin brutes and just carefully nipping at everybody's ankles and looting all the chests i worked my way down and in this last minute of i just have to go for it dropped down and got the nether ward, attempting to tower up and then being knocked off of my pillar, panic running and sealing myself into a corner 
corner, digging very slowly all the way back out until I was back into open land. From there, I did a combination of using my coordinates and an obsidian boat to cover the lava lakes and then towering upwards and sailing over in air to cover just that last bit of distance to get back to the portal and cross back into the overworld around day 55. From there, I dug out a little spot and made a place for all of the nether wart that I had collected, which unfortunately is crouch proof. It is uncrouchable. It cannot be crouched. So this is the one thing I'm actually gonna have to wait for. As the potions brewed, I just did some long range sniping on all of the imposters that I happened to see until there was one inside of a house. So I named them sus and kept them inside. They're my pet forever now. Day 56, I realized there's one last thing I need from the nether before the wither fight, and that's a ghast tier. I want regeneration potions to counter the wither effect to make sure that I can, you know, stay alive. But with all of the other random mods, ghasts are extremely rare for some reason, as there's just Among Us and Squid Game dolls running around everywhere. The first one that spawned gave me an advancement because I shot their ghast fireball at the last possible second to kill them with that, but no tier. The second one was the one who dropped the tier, so I immediately ran back, started brewing up some regeneration potions, and again, spammed the bed so that I wouldn't be killed in my sleep. And with that, it was time for another round of mods. Now, chickens will drop feathers. You can sit on basically anything. There's nice, beautiful falling leaves, scuba gear, spike traps, additional banners, compressed blocks, uppers, classic bars, and chimes. On day 57, I enjoyed the beauty of the world. The new little leaf particles running off of the trees, making a few iron stands for a few of the gold swords that I had collected, and making some compressed cobblestone, which looks a little bit different than all of the other gray blocks that I found, thankfully. I started digging out what I knew would be the shell for a creeper farm. Since I had unlocked Cursed Earth a little while back, that will actually spawn mobs like nobody's business given the right conditions. So the next day, I was using all of the wood to just make as many trapdoors as possible to start at least one small chamber of the creeper farm. We're going to use iron spikes as the killing platform for this because why not use the mods as long as they're there? And uppers makes it really easy to just filter all of the resources up to a singular barrel instead of having to worry about a big complex redstone machine. Once that was sealed, it was time to spawn the wither because that's what I need to get cursed earth. So I took a deep breath, checked my armor, and here we go. And with obsidian armor, my protection enchants, and a really solid bow, I was able to quickly get the wither down to its melee range. I used both of my golden apples and one of my regeneration potions as my primary healing to keep me alive, but at the end of the day, the wither fell okay, without we're much doing this. Still have yet to be withered. Oh, cool. Yo! That went really well. That went really well. Wow, I was expecting that to be way worse. I mean, we're fine, right? We're fine. We're fine. How long is Wither gonna keep affecting me? Two minutes! That goes for so long. Okay, we're just gonna cover this up and pretend it didn't happen. What are you looking at, Cal? You're fine. It says a lot that I had just killed the god of death in yet another reality, and I'm hiding underwater from a bunch of red sussy boys who just want to stab me in the throat. This mod's balance is way off. The next day, since I had let it get dark, there were so many imposters spawned. So I had to basically spend the first half of the day just shooting them down from range, just constantly missing the shot until they go zip, 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 and are just standing still again that I could actually hit them. But once I had done that, I used the Wither Roses from the Wither Fight to spawn the first few blocks of Cursed Earth, crouching so that it would spread and take over the entire interior space. Also, since I had a Wither Star, I started setting up a beacon. I have infinite iron, so I could get a top tier beacon in relative ease, and that would make me feel a lot safer from the Among Us people. D62, I already have a tier three beacon and it's just waiting for the iron to generate to get it up to a tier four. I went to go check on the creeper farm and nothing had actually spawned. 
I was checking out all of the uppers, sniping any imposters who were close by, and working on the roof of the trading hall, just waiting for the whole thing to kind of click. As I replanted all of the nether wart, I rechecked on the farm and nothing had yet spawned. It was kind of weird. I was checking on all the configs and all the back end. The color for the cursed earth was wrong. We fixed that immediately after, but it just didn't seem to be working. The next morning, while still stressing over the farm, I had a little sit just to try to clear my mind and think. The sound of the bamboo wind chimes directly above my head just kept whispering to me, Bobcat, Bobcat. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So I walked away, just trying to get out of render distance so that all of the mobs that were in this general area would despawn and then the cursed earth would take priority. And once I did, uh, it worked a little too well. Looking inside of that thing and seeing that many imposters, that many dolls, those, that is probably the most lethal few blocks in all of Minecraft across any reality. That is legitimately terrifying. But we're only a few days until Christmas, so you knew I had to put one of those Santa hats on, right? So, there you go. Ho, ho, ho. The next day, collecting over half a stack of gunpowder from the farm, I decided to go out flying to see what the world had in store. I found a sunken ship with some eh loot inside, making my way over towards the Shattered Savannah and the first loot pig who I killed on the side of a river for a bunch of emeralds and diamonds. From there, I found a desert with unfortunately no temple immediately visible, but I did find a patch of drowned with about half of them wearing scuba gear and one of them with a trident. I might not have walked away with a battle fork, but I did walk away with three quarters of a diving suit. If I could find a pair of pants and get the full set bonus, we might use that a little bit later in this playthrough. The nearby buried treasure had a lot of everything, and I take all the things. Flying my way back to base to deal with the very loud creeper farm, which I don't even think I can call just a creeper farm at this point. I did a little bit of trading before sailing off towards the stronghold the next day, finding a mushroom biome only about like one degree off of where I had gone in my first path. I could have found this way sooner. But I flew over to the stronghold and did something that you might not be expecting. These mods are honestly really powerful. The next day I was building the portal inside of the village, which is now right here and I don't need to go far for it, using some chisel block to give it a really nice marble look. Once the portal was there and with an extra few stacks of rockets in my pocket, I flew over the void towards some new end cities to get shulker shells so I could have shulker boxes on top of my backpack to have even more inventory space. The diamonds and high tier diamond gear that's in end cities definitely wasn't that bad either as I found upgrades for both my helmet and my boots, as well as a backup elytra. But after only about 10, 15 minutes of end raiding, I returned back home so that on day haha -ha, funny number, I could use some of those new decorative blocks to make the place look really good. After the trading halls looking nice, I organized all of the loot that I had collected into different shulker boxes, realizing that I, wait, it's, oh, it's day 69, so never mind, that's, that's more mods. I can measure things now, I can excavate ores, I can make pumpkin spice stuff. Decorative blocks are now available. Pirate hats could be findable. TNT foods, which seems like a bad idea in hardcore. Some expanded combat, being able to drink beer. Eternal winter, which is concerning. And then, oops, there's a homicidal duolingo bird. What? But on day, haha, -ha, funny number, I built out some of the new decorative blocks just to give the village just a little bit more spice. And then organized my backpack and colored all the shulkers so I had an idea of what exactly I had and where I would put it. I made a quiver to open up even more inventory space, being able to stack multiple stacks of arrows and it just kind of living on a phantom inventory slot on my back. And, uh, oh, it it's snowing now. The mob farm is literally overflowing and there's very little I can do to slow that down. And I just realized I could wear the backpack as a backpack and I didn't need to hold it in my inventory for the last 60 days. 
On day 70, I went over to the tent that I had started making earlier with the checkered wool and turned it into a beer tent, setting up a few kegs and preparing to brew different ales to be able to get their enhancing effects. It takes 20 minutes though, so during that time I flew out and around. Since the water's freezing by my base, I need to go get sugarcane from other places. But I spent the rest of the day putting up some of the new decorative blocks to make the tent feel a little bit more supported, some tables, buttons, and connecting the path to the main path network of the village so far. On day 71, I committed a sin. I made pumpkin spice baked potatoes. Now you see, I I, I feel bad about this. I, I do legitimately feel bad about this. I regret everything. On day 72, I flew out in the last cardinal direction heading east from my base and found pretty much nothing but frozen and cold biomes. There's even more huge icebergs as well as taiga forests and snow covering the ground in a lot of places where I hadn't seen it before. It's almost exactly on the chunk border. Every new chunk is basically frozen. I also finally ate one of those pumpkin spice baked potatoes and they poison you. So mad respect for the mod developers. These things are, war <laughs> These things are awful in every language. But as I went home, the beer was finally ready. So I drank a few and it gave you special effects. I should have saved some of it, but I just downed eight mugs of beer and felt no negative side effects whatsoever. Turns out my Minecraft character is an absolute champ. But I need to switch back to good food. So I'm back on the berries and the pumpkin spice has been sequestered off into a barrel, never to be touched again. I grabbed some more sugar cane as things are continuing to get worse and snow is piling up. I grabbed a full stack of food and then made a Spanish textbook because I need to see what this Duolingo bird is all about. These imposters though are relentless. I spent the morning shooting them before heading off and trying to find a jungle. Sailing over, sailing over an ocean monument and actually getting mining fatigue, which was not what I was expecting to happen. I did eventually find a jungle, but the colors were muted, darker, looked like a taiga forest. And I'm thinking, this is not a good sign. There's probably something I need to do about that. But first things first, I need to see what this boss is about. I needed to find a parrot and smack it with a Spanish textbook in order to summon it. And that's exactly what I did. Flying away, phase one is literally four bow shots to just take it down. And from there, it spawned into phase two with some really terrifying sound effects, but just kind of standing there and tanking the hits. It took quite a few more bow shots and then phase three spawned. Okay, I noticed two problems. Problem one, it appears to be immune to arrows. <laughs> Problem two, it's holding a shotgun. <laughs> oh no, okay. All right, so let's do this. Let's... I do not know how well this is gonna go. Let's find out. Ow. Okay, Duolingo, <laughs> come here. Oh no. So as I loaded back into the world to get some final screenshots thinking that would be the end of it, I was fine. I was standing over the bed, but the world had, the world had changed. There was a massive snowstorm outside with layers of snow coating everything far quicker than ever before. I went down into the farms to grab more rockets materials and there's just, it's a whiteout. You can barely see more than 15 blocks in any direction. Flying is at this point is practically impossible. I'm just standing here looking at a mess of things. Also, strays are spawning now and shooting me with slowness arrows and they have really strong armor on at the same time as well. And this just feels, something feels wrong. Something feels like it, it, it doesn't make sense. Tried to fly around again to get out of the storm, away from it, but it's just a wall of particles in every direction as far as you can see. So I slept thinking that would reset the weather cycle and nope, uh, no it's not. And some of the mobs that I've been seeing this entire time, they're gone now. 
Sus has disappeared altogether. The Squid Game dolls, I've barely seen one of them since. Almost every mob that's spawning seems to be either a skeleton, a creeper, a very fast creeper, or a stray. Trying to venture out is basically just fighting an invisible wall of snow, so I contained myself to the village, trying to see what I could do. I put down a ton of torches, but it didn't slow down the snow at all, and I realized that my farmer villager was no longer harvesting crops, or at least the ones that they had harvested weren't getting replanted. But I slept again, and my hearts had gone down. I lost another two hearts just out of nowhere. Now, one went down from the unhealthy dying mod, that makes sense, but the rest... I, did, I hadn't died again, I just slept through the night. I tried venturing out even further, but I have to sail just a few blocks over the water to avoid just crashing into anything, to have any idea where I'm going. All I really have to go off of is the beam of the beacon and the compass that I have in my pocket to point me, to let me know if I'm heading to or from my home. It, there's no indication whatsoever of where I'm going or where anything is, the world, has frozen over. And now it's three sleeps? About to be four. Okay. And it hasn't changed. It's it's too early. <laughs> it's too early. This is this doesn't make sense. This is this is not one this is uh, I should have more time. There should be more time. I should I shouldn't have to go yet. Why is this one falling apart just like all the others? This should be helping. It's not. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, not again. Look, we had a deal. Alright, we have a deal. I'm supposed to be able to just take my time and go one at a time, one trip at a time. We had a deal. We had a... Mm. This is too soon. It's too early. This is not when this is supposed to happen. Do you hear me? We have... I have more to do. I have more time. I need more time. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Alright. I get it. I get it. I get it. Just... <sighs> Just make sure I'm not alone in the next one, alright? We'll talk about this later.